Okay, this is another find the missing voltage. They're saying fluorine is reduced to provide fluoride ions, so fluorine takes electrons, as it is known for doing, and we get two fluorides, so that happens. And X, I don't know what element X is, gets oxidized undergoes oxidation. I don't know if this is charge is supposed to be plus two or plus three or what, but it doesn't really matter for what we're calculating here. So I'll just keep it simple and say it's one electron. Now, if fluorine gas is reduced, that reaction's in our data book. And it's at the very top. Fluorine is the strongest oxidizing agent. And how good is it at that? 2.87 volts. This reaction, as written, has a potential of 2.87 volts. And they tell us the grand total for all this is 2.53 volts. Okay, so what does that tell us about X? If we added up these two reactions and got 2.53, then that means this happened. 2.87 plus x, some unknown voltage, came out to 2.53. If you do algebra to this, if you subtract 2.87 from each side, you should find that this reaction must have been minus 0.34 volts. That's called the oxidation potential for X because this reaction is an oxidation. X goes from 0 up to plus 1. What's the reduction potential for X? Well, that's what we would normally have in our data book. That's the one with the electrons on the left. And to get that, all you do is take this reaction and flip it. The reduction reaction is X plus, taking up an electron and turning into X. What's the voltage? Well, if you flip this, you flip the voltage, so it must have been 0 0.34 volts. And now they ask, what metal is X? Well, if it's 0.34 volts, uh, da, 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 right there, 0 0.34 volts suggests it might be copper. There could be other metals that have that same reduction potential. So we can't be 100% on this, but it is reasonable to assume it might be copper.